Hello and welcome back to Banner Lord. We have just entered into a hideout. It's snowing, as you can see, and I am ready to show just how fantastically, well, kind of bad I am. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm decidedly just a little bit below average. Anyway, the point is, we are going to try and take out these uh, sea raiders. This is actually a sea raider hideout, which is something that we've never done before. And I thought, hey, why not? Let's try it out. Now, we've got to be a bit careful here because these guys are obviously going to do quite a bit of damage to us. What? What? Are you serious? Come on now. I can't believe he actually hit me from there. Okay. Well, whatever the case, I'm going to get out my thrown weapons here and we're just going to try and see what we can do. There we go. Nice little tank right there. Maybe I can... Yeah, most of my people now have shields, thankfully, because if you recall, when we uh, actually used to do... Did I really miss that? Oh, thank you. Thanks for standing in my way. <laughs> oh, oh, thanks. Th thanks again. Thanks for standing in my way again. Right. Apparently, th apparently the thrown weapons are not treating me very well today. So, guess I'm going to just literally stop doing that. You know, just gonna, <laughs> just gonna stop killing my own units. That sounds like a great plan, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, basically. If the Batanians, who are still being pretty aggressive towards us, by the way, but if the if the Batanians actually want the entire destruction of Sturgia, all they need to do is just allow Barney to go in there and uh, basically just take out all the uh, all the all the Sturgians himself. That's basically what he's what he's capable of doing. And uh, yeah, <laughs> uh. Oh, I can't believe I missed that. That was really bad, wasn't it? Yeah, it's been a while since I've used thrown weapons, so I do apologize for my ineptitude in that regard. But we're, we're still doing fine. We're still doing great. Most of most of our people are doing a very nice job. Oh, yeah, by the way, I actually purchased a new helm. As you can see, this is a new helm. I think uh, I actually saw a comment from uh, a person in the comments, and uh, that basically detailed that I missed a helm. I missed a really, really good helm for about 6,000 gold, and I thought to myself, oh, that's a shame. So I decided, okay, I'm gonna make it my mission in my off-screen time to try and find a nice helm. And I actually found a nice helm. It has 47 armor, not 50, which is what the other one was. But uh, yeah, it's got, a, it's got a decent amount, and I'm hopeful that I will be able to use it to good effect. And uh, then we are going to be uh, pretty pretty good, you know. We're going to hopefully just uh, have some nice um, nice killing to do here. And uh, I'm just going to continue to tell my people just to charge in, I think. Because uh, it seems like most of the time we can basically just do that. And they are fine. There's only like two enemies remaining anyway. There's not that many people in this particular Sea Raider hideout. But I thought I would take it out anyway. Just because it seemed like a lot of Sea Raiders were coming from this area. And I kind of wanted to make it a little safer for the for the uh, very small varieties of different vassals that were running around and everything. Because obviously I don't want those guys to get taken down by some random Sea Raider party. And instead of, you know, focusing on actually beating the Batanians. All right. So I will do, I will duel you. I will duel you. Let's see. Oh, he has a two-handed axe. Okay, this is actually kind of hilarious because I can... Uh, oh, whoa, whoa. Okay, we actually... Go <laughs> I love the ragdolls. The ragdolls are so funny. Anyway, I actually didn't realize that you could go out of the uh, quote-unquote arena, the makeshift arena right there. So yeah, that's actually kind of hilarious. But there you go. We lost literally no one in this particular hideout attack and we did gain some renown which is always nice and we also gained some prisoners so you can see here i actually do have quite a few prisoners available mainly because i have taken these out of the garrison in my castle because my castle is actually still there i actually thought that it, it, it had been taken by someone but it actually hadn't so very nice very nice indeed so we will just take a bunch of these things we'll take this this is going to sell for a large amount of cash and then we are good. And this is the main reason why, why I wanted to do this, by the way. The relation increase with the notables. As you can see, it seems like uh, Sturgia is now once again being uh, being murdered in every single way. Which is not great <laughs> by any means. It's pretty awful. And you can see that I actually spent quite a lot of money on the, on the helm. I spent about 30-something thousand on it. 
So yeah, pretty expensive. Probably not the best idea for me to do that, but eh, you know, I thought it was pretty fun to uh, get a new helm and I don't really mind about it so much. So we're just going to lock a couple of other things here and then we'll see what we can do about hunting down some vassals once again. This is my old helm, by the way. I don't think actually anyone... Uh, actually, th th this is my old helm. I actually gave that to Alaska and that's it. Yeah, so we can just sell this. And there we go. All right, that's absolutely fine. 752. And I could buy some hardwood right here, but I don't know whether I really want to spend the time doing smithing. I would actually like to do smithing because I find it quite fun and I find, I find it quite relaxing actually to do smithing. But as, um, as someone pointed out, the reason why Sturgia is having such a difficult time with the exception of obviously just, you know, being kind of awful, but uh, yeah... With the exception of that, I believe it's probably because I decided to give the banner to Radenvad that quickly. And that actually made things much more intense than it had to be. So that's definitely something to consider as well. And I definitely should be a bit more careful with what I do in the future. But anyway, let's just sell a bunch of, well, not sell, but we'll give all these and donate the prisoners, gain some influence. And I'm actually wondering how our wonderful shield maiden is actually doing. So, oh, there's Yorick. We could actually get him. Wow, she's not doing very well at all. As you can see, she's only got 17 units. This is, are you, is this actually the extent of our, oh yeah, they just got, they just got eliminated, didn't they? So I guess I will get Yorick to come and help me. And we'll see how that goes. There he is. All right, so yeah, he's going to come and help, and you can see here that we took Takor Castle. I didn't take I didn't take that, but uh, the various people did. So I guess that's I guess that's good. Come on, come on now, join me. He's a bit slow, so it's good that he can uh, now travel with us instead. But yeah, they took that, and that seems decent. I guess that seems pretty decent because there's 81 defenders there now. Actually wondering whether we can take Balgard. It's highly unlikely. They're probably going to reinforce it pretty quickly. Lek was actually just taken prisoner by step bandits as well. Ugh. Pretty awful. Okay, so we have 155 defenders right here. And it seems like the Batanians are absolutely massacring everything. And it's and look at this. Our shield maiden companion has been taken prisoner by looters. Yeah, by looters. That is not exactly... Oh, hello. Hello, Yurik. Hello. Okay, you are way too slow for me, so I will catch you like no one's business. Or at least... Yes, I will. <laughs> Phew. That was actually a little bit close. I thought to myself, no, we're not going to catch him. But we actually did in the end. Okay, so this guy has literally been the subject of our attacks so many times now that... I really want to execute him, but so many people are worried about how people are going to treat Barney in the future that I will try to be a little bit more lenient to these defectors. So what I'm thinking of doing is basically letting everyone go, because if I if I donate them to the to the dungeon, so to speak, then I do gain some influence, but that's it. I don't really gain anything else. But if I let them go, then I will gain relation with them and stuff like that. So that seems like a pretty decent. Uh, well, not, not so much a compromise, because I don't, I'm not really wanting to compromise in this case, but uh, I would like to try and be as prepared as possible for the worst outcome. That's basically what I want to do, because the worst outcome, of course, as you no doubt can tell, is Sturgia's elimination. That is the worst outcome that I can possibly have, and I can't really do anything about it. There's not really anything for me to do, like, if... If they want to get eliminated, then it, that's basically their choice. I can't really change it without eliminating every single vassal that ventures into Sturgeon territory. And that's kind of difficult for me by myself. But uh, yeah, anyway, we're just going to tell these guys to charge in. Uh, let's actually just tell them to self-delegate and we'll tell the archers to self-delegate as well. Let's try and take out the horse riders as much as possible. And these, uh, this is exactly what I mean. Sturgeon units, they are not that good, I gotta say. They, they don't seem that good to me because you can see here, I can literally just cut these down 
super easily. I don't even need to really worry about it, to be honest. Even using a thrusting attack does 42 damage to some of them. And it's a bit disheartening, I gotta say. It's a bit disheartening because I'm not entirely sure how Sturgier is supposed to win against a faction like um, Batania, for example, because Batania is something that I definitely thought was going to do very well. I thought their, their faction was going to be very strong. The Fian units, for example, they used to be archers, as I spoke about in the previous episode, but they were changed to throw weapons instead. So, yeah, that, that's absolutely all, all well and good, of course, all well and good. However, they're still very powerful. I feel like they are still extremely powerful, and I don't know why that is, but every single time I have seen uh, an AI friend of ours be in a situation where, you know, they can take losses against the Batanians. They are going to take losses, even if they are, are the ones outnumbering the opponent. So it is very troublesome, in my opinion. So not entirely sure how that's really going to go in the future, because obviously, if we have to start eliminating the enemy in a bigger way... I don't know how we're going to do it, because Batania just has such strong units. Maybe that's just my impression of them so far, but I personally feel like Batania is one of the stronger factions. Obviously, I haven't really fought the Vlandians, and I did fight the uh, the Empire a little bit, so of course the Empire is definitely on my list as one of the stronger factions as well. And uh, I think someone actually did mention that the... Oh, this is actually quite a nice harness. Uh, yeah, we're going to give that to Lasker. But yeah, someone did actually mention that these Sturgeons do not have very good infantry. And I'm kind of surprised at that, because I actually picked them thinking they were going to be kind of kind of good with their infantry, because they don't have a very strong, uh, shall we say, cavalry line. And if we actually go to the Sturgeons right here, you can actually see that their cavalry is limited to basically horse archers. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I kind of thought to myself, oh, okay, so they're not really that good at archery. They're not really that good at horse cavalry stuff. I mean, their horse archers are okay, but you've seen how easily we're able to eliminate those when we're fighting defectors and things like that. So not really that, not really that damaging. And also the bowmen don't seem to be that accurate either in comparison to uh, maybe the empire. The empire archers seem to be quite good. Anyway... And then uh, what else do we have here? We've got the Berserkers. Okay, so obviously we have Berserkers and we have Olfednar, which are basically just upgraded Berserkers. Now these, these things are insanely fun to use, in my opinion, but the current state of Bannerlord, in my opinion, this is just my personal opinion on this, is saying that archers and indeed ranged, we ranged weapons and ranged units are very strong right now. And obviously, you know, the developers might decide, hey, we're going to tone these things back. We're going to try and improve the survivability of these particular units. Because let's face it, one of these Sturgeon Olfednars is literally going to run across the battlefield without a horse, bear that in mind, without a horse, all the way over to the other side of the battlefield. And then as soon as he's about to, you know, swipe at someone with their massive two-handed axe or sword or whatever they're going to use, then they're just going to get headshot or they're going to get shot multiple times by an Imperial Archer or something like that. And all of that is for nothing and they do no damage. And that's it. They have no survivability because they have no shield. And that is the problem. The ranged combat does seem to be quite strong at the moment. And that's the, that's the reason why you're basically forced into selecting a Sturgeon Veteran Warrior as your main, main troop, I guess you could say. Of course, you do have the option to pick the Sturgeon Shock Troops, but if I can't check what their uh, stats, I mean not their stats, what their gear is, then I can't really compare them accurately enough to basically be like, oh yeah, this is exactly, you know, what uh, what is going to happen here. You know, I can't really compare them. But if we have a look at Batania, for example, so let's have a look at their Fian Champions. These guys right here level up from the Fian, and you can already see they're two-handed, and look at their bow proficiency. These guys use bows? They apparently do use bows. Because I actually thought that they were changed to use uh, thrown weapons, but apparently they, they use bows. 
But anyway, their maximum level unit, which is a champion, has 280 bow proficiency. That's basically maximum. That's basically the maximum that you can get. So if I have a look at Sturgier again, and I show you their archers. Where are their archers? Uh, veteran bowmen, I think? Yeah, ve yeah, veteran bowmen. So they have 130 bows. And the Batanians have 280. You can see the massive disparity here. And that's exactly the reason why Batania, in my opinion, is doing very well for themselves. They're doing very, very well indeed. And I think it is literally just because of their, their very strong ranged capabilities. I'm actually going to try and get Svedorn to come in here. I'd like to get Simia and Godun as well, but uh, that's highly unlikely in my opinion. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and see if we can maybe take Balgard because you can see right here that the Batanians are being taken prisoner by the Vlandians. The Vlandians might actually be our saviors in this case, which I would very much appreciate. So we'll see how it goes. And we're going to head in here and try and do a little bit of a siege. All right, so we're actually building our Onagers right here. I'm actually thinking that the Onagers are going to probably be the, our best shot. I don't know whether we're going to do very well, though, because they have so many ballistas available. As you can see, we ha actually have Svedorn. Yes, there he is. Fantastic. Svedorn actually came and is uh, starting to help us. This is fantastic. I wonder whether we can get more people. Yes, Fafen. Fafen, come and help us. Come and help us, Fafen. And Simier as well. Yes. Okay, those guys are only a day away. They might very well be able to come and help us with this siege. And if someone massive comes along, we might very well do quite well because I am actually the commander this time around. And that means that I will be able to decide where we go and what we do. So I'm actually very much looking forward to this. Let's see how the Onaga does. I have a bad feeling it's probably just going to die instantly. Oh, no, no, it's actually doing fantastic. Wow. Oh yeah, it actually did very, very well right there. Okay, so that's very, that's very good because I'm actually going to build another one. And let's build another one here. Yes, look at this. We have 338. We've got 423. Almost 420, blaze it. But yeah, anyway, we are going to have a very good chance of doing very, very well here. If no Batanians turn up. As I say, they have just been defeated technically. So we might have a very good opportunity here. And our engineering skill is actually advancing as I, as I speak. And they actually have no food remaining. This is great. This is actually fantastic that they have no food remaining. Because that means they're going to start to starve out. And it is going to be really, really good for us. So I'm just going to continue building Onagas. This is actually a tip from one of you in the comments. And i got to say thank you. Thank you for that. Because I was a little bit unsure about what kind of siege engines to use. I kind of thought... You know, maybe Onagers, maybe uh, maybe some Ballistas or something like that. But it seems like the Onager is doing pretty well for us right now. I'm actually unsure if it will actually start killing things because... Uh, oh, we got two up now. Oh, that's actually fantastic. Yeah, if, we, if we've got two up, as you can see, we're actually starting to take... Actually starting to do damage to the wall, which is really, really nice. And if we can get more Onagers up, that's just going to mean more damage. More damage. That's what we like to see. So... Once this is done, we've got another Onager. There we go. Yep, this is actually going fantastically well. This is going very, very well indeed. I'm extremely surprised, to be honest. Really thought that we were going to have a massive surge of Batanian units coming in here. But it looks as though that will not be the case. And we will actually be able to take this. I think we're actually just going to go and auto-resolve this straight up. Or should I just wait? Because I could theoretically just wait and I don't even have to auto-resolve or even go in there because the Onagers are going to force the enemy to potentially um, maybe they will surrender or something like that I'm not entirely sure what happens because I've never done this before this is actually one of the really cool things about Bannerlord in my opinion and I think it really does make a big difference to have different options having different options in regards to how you deal with the opponent is basically half of the fun because obviously being able to choose is one of the biggest 
like biggest features of a sandbox game you know you want a sandbox game that you can choose what you do in it you know you don't want to be linearly told hey you must do a b c no you know we want to be able to do a z d and three and two and whatever else you know we want to be able to do all of that stuff oh hello Sega. all right i'm gonna send the troops in now and we will hopefully achieve victory without losing too many units are you serious right now did you oh, did you see that we lost so many just for, wow can't believe it 93 we actually ended up losing which is kind of awful but we took back the town which is a big win for us that is a very very big win and i am actually going to attempt to attack Sega right now so let's do that never gonna happen Never going to happen. They're going to be way too fast. So what I'm going to do now is I'm probably going to let our forces just go wherever they want to go. And I am going to donate my prisoners to this. Gain a little bit of extra influence. And I think because our cohesion is starting to run out, because of course cohesion... Do you want to resolve the owner of Balgard decision? Uh, <laughs> sure, why not? So let's, uh, let's just support Ragnvad. We'll support him with 100 influence. Why not get a little bit of relation with him? And uh, yeah, may maybe we can actually marry into his family. That's what I'm actually hoping we might be able to do. But I think he hates us. Yeah, as you can see, his relation with us is minus 98 because I have literally been executing people. So that is... <laughs> Uh, that's not particularly good, is it? No, not particularly good. My bad, my bad. But it's okay, it's okay. We're, we're doing all right. You know, we're not doing badly. We're doing fine. And even if everyone absolutely hates our guts in our own faction, then that's just how it has to be. So we're going to disband the army for the moment. And we will let everyone go about their business. I will go and do a little bit of smithing if I can. It seems like I don't even have a huge amount to smith with. So basically pointless. I should have bought some of that uh, hardwood at Sibia. That's uh, usually where you're going to get the most of it. As you can see, there's nothing here. So I probably won't be doing anything with that. Uh, is there anything else that I can do here? Not really, not really. So let's have a look at the character screen because I think that actually someone... Uh, I actually... Didn't I gain 50 pole arms? Yes, I did. Aha, look at that. Plus 15% morale to troops in formation at the start of battle. And then what else do we have? 70% more damage to horses, 2% combat movement speed while wielding a pole arm. I think 70% more damage to horses is absolutely fantastic. So we'll probably take that next. And we do have a uh, focus point. And I'm thinking of using it on pole arms, to be honest, because it seems to have done such a good job for us. Maybe I want to level up leadership a little bit. Mm, leadership is actually working quite well for us. Engineering might actually be pretty good, because as you can see, speed of building castles and walls increased. Ah, that's actually not so good. I was actually thinking that that would be an increase in the speed of siege engines itself. But, oh well. Uh, I could go for engineering because we are going to continue building engineer stuff. So it kind of would make sense to make us the engineer, I suppose. Anyway, we'll just let everyone else do their own thing. We did actually end up losing quite a few people. So maybe I should go and recruit some. Never mind. Yes, no, there aren't any troops to recruit there. Okay, so let's go here and try and recruit some troops from here. Okay, wow, barely any. But we do have quite a few people actually injured. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Okay, so yeah, I'm probably just going to wait here for some time. And it seems like Ragnvad is potentially going to go on a bit of a bit of a campaign. And I wish him the best of luck. I certainly do. But I don't hold very high hopes for this. Because let's face it, every single time the AI has called for a campaign, it has always ended in some kind of bloodbath. And not in a good way. Not in a good way. Oh, now look at that. Of Castle has actually been taken by the Southern Empire, so I suppose we don't need to worry about that too much. And look at that, our riding score has increased to 40. That's quite nice too. Anyway, let's have a look at Omor right here. It seems like Ragnvad is actually attempting to take this. Is that Pelasaur? It is. Hello, old friend. Uh, stay away from me. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so yeah, we still have Istiana's plan. That is still increasing, as you can see right there, but... Uh, we can't really do much about that right now. So is he actually is he actually going in there? 
Ah, actually not. It seems as though he is just engaging Uruk's party, and that's absolutely fine. If he wants to do that, then he can very easily do that. There's Lys. I'm actually very surprised that my caravans are still running through hostile territory and still doing a reasonably good job. Anyway, let's see if we can maybe do something here. Now, I don't really want to go closer to Batanian territory, but if I have to... Oh, hello, there's Ergion. Yes, he's going to be a huge thorn in our side if we decide to do something here. He's besieging Lanok Hen Castle. Where's that? I don't even know where that is. Hello, there's there's Uruk. He was just defeated. Did you see that? <laughs> this guy is insane. Yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about in the previous episode as well, because I, I think I... Uh, didn't I let this guy go? Or No, I, did, I don't think I let him go, but uh, in general, I, I donated him, I believe, to one of the dungeons. And then all of a sudden, here he is again. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy. Yes, I did take Balgard. Thank you. Yes, I did. We are attempting to fight back as best we can. All right, so we have 99 against 94. I am 100% believing that he will probably do quite a bit of damage to us. And I'm not a big fan of that. So let's have a look at what he has. Oh, he's actually got only 16 Sturgeon recruits and he's got 17 warriors and that's basically it otherwise he's got one shock troop a couple of veteran warriors and nothing else really to write home about it's actually kind of insulting that he's still using sturgeon units i'm not a i, I don't really like defectors or faction hoppers or anything like that i much prefer to have people that are loyal good serving people that are willing to fight for what they believe in and that's exactly what barney's standing for apart from beheading people of course He's a, a great executioner. <laughs> uh, we're gonna start. We're gonna stop doing that now. By the way, we're gonna stop doing that because let's face it, we need some friends, and having some friends would definitely help us out quite a bit. So that, you know, that's a, it's a you know, it's a good plan. It's a good plan. So I, I uh, yeah, thanks for re reining me in. I guess I could say because I was getting a bit carried away with the executions. A little bit, just a little. <laughs> I was having a lot of fun with it, basically. That's the, that's the whole reason, because I wanted to get those guys out of there, you know, as soon as possible, basically. And uh, being able to do that and eliminate them from the game entirely is actually really, really cool to do. So that was the main reason why I decided to do that. How dare you? How dare you? Okay, I will take this horse then. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> oh, this is a much slower horse. Yes, this is a little bit worrying. Okay, so the enemy is actually quite far away from us right now. And have we... Oh, we still haven't eliminated their their their, their cavalry? That is actually kind of disappointing. Are they, are they dead now? Yeah, it seems like they're actually dead now. Okay, fantastic. Because I was a bit, uh, a bit worried about that. Do you see that? Do you see that guy right there? He was actually picking up stuff from the ground. He was actually picking up throwing weapons. Wow. That's pretty cool. I like it. I know we saw that in the multiplayer beta, but I was kind of... I, I was kind of thinking that that was a player or something like that, but that was pretty cool. Okay, so let's have a look. Where are the enemies? Okay, they... Oh, look at this. I can actually take my, uh, my mouse and place them wherever I want. Oh, okay. I did not realize that that was the case. I thought I had to still do it with the, uh, you know, with the function keys. But you can actually do it with your mouse as well. That's pretty cool. Okay, so let's get my archers to stand around about here. Personally, I find it a little bit easier to do it with the function keys anyway, literally just because I'm used to it. But I'm going to have to be a bit careful here about throne weapons, because the throne weapons are... We know how, the, how good they are. You know, they can, uh, they can do quite a bit of damage. So, let's see if we can maybe do something. Okay, so we're going to skirmish a little bit. So I'm just going to send my horse archers to go in here. And uh, maybe we'll see if we can do some damage to them. And not too bad so far. Oh, they're going into circle formation. Oh, look at that. Very, very smart of them, isn't it? Okay, there's my second horse dead. That's not very nice of them. Ow. I'm also dead myself, almost. Okay, so let's tell my uh, infantry to charge in, and we'll tell these guys to do whatever they want to do as well. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a problem. I'm going to tell my horse archers to do whatever they want as well. I think I'm going to die here, by the way. I think I'm probably going to die unless I have someone help me, like that fellow. Thank you so much. 
That was very, very helpful. Okay, yeah. Gonna have to get used to this again. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, just ignore me. Ignore me trying out my thrown weapons for the... <laughs> Uh, for this. Oh, that was just... Oh, my goodness. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah. Just just focus on me being act actually kind of okay with using this polearm. Just focus on that. Just ignore the ignore the wonderful thrown weapon practice that I just did. Yes, that was great. All right. Well, uh, yeah, we're actually good. We, we've actually beaten this guy. I'm not entirely sure how many we lost. I think we can actually press tab. Yeah. Someone actually mentioned in the comments. I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. For letting me know that tab is actually the new casualty report uh, keybind, because obviously before in Warband it was middle mouse button, or in my case middle mouse button because I rebound it. But anyway, we lost six. We lost six. That's actually really, really good. And I don't think we can retreat, or I don't think we can end the battle yet. So that is unfortunate. Where where are the enemies? Okay, I think I think I can actually retreat now. Right? Yeah, there we go. Okay, fantastic. 11 Renown. Look at that. 11 Renown, 10 Influence. Nice. Okay, I'm happy with the uh, with the Renown gain right there. That is pretty insane. And I... I meant to let him go. Ah, I meant to let him go. Okay. Mm, my bad, my bad. Okay, never mind, never mind. We're, what we're going to do is we're just going to speak to him. And then we will say, hey, uh, I made a mistake. You can go free and, you know, so on. And, uh, yeah, that's what we'll do. Not going to take too many prisoners because I don't want to be weighed down in this area. And we'll just take all the uh, all the horses. I still have a desert horse that I'm using, which is, in my opinion, pretty good. It seems to fulfill exactly what I need it to do. And what else do we have here? Broad blade javelins, bunch of other stuff. Okay, we should probably take some food. I know I have a lot of food, but I generally don't want to get caught out with not having enough food. So that's the reason why I'm taking a whole bunch of it. Okay, anything else here? No, I could take a cow, but it weighs 200, which is just way too much to lug around at this point. And let me see if I can speak to the guy. Why am I going here? I don't want to go here. I want to go to my party screen, thank you. All right, so let's, um, yeah, I hovered over the execute button. I really, oh, oh, okay. I actually did want to let him go, but I made a slight error. Okay, my bad. <sighs> okay, next, next one. Okay, next one that we get, gonna let that guy go. And uh, <laughs> then hopefully that will appease a couple of people. You know, hopefully some lords will start to like us a little bit more. And, uh, well, I've kind of burnt a bunch of bridges, haven't I? Because, let's face it, I'm now literally the most hated person in all of Sturgia, by the looks of things. So there is that. Very good. Uh, yeah, okay. So I have 18 people that are... Oh, there's Seeger. Seeger actually defected as well? Are you serious? Ah, uh, How do I actually defect? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I don't really want to defect, but I actually just wonder how you would do that because I don't know how. I don't know how to do that. Maybe if you uh, select them or something. Wow, look at this. Kuze Khanate Western Empire completely destroyed. The Southern Empire has 8,100 strength. I can't believe it. Wow, okay, and the Northern Empire is 4,300. Uh, actually, Batania is not doing that well. They're actually starting to take a lot more uh, damage in this war than they might have expected. So that's actually pretty cool. But anyway, I am kind of injured, so I am going to head back to... Oh, hello. Hello. I would like to eliminate this guy if at all possible. I'm going to try and push him into the opposite direction. Because if we can push him towards the castle that we want to go to then we might have a good chance. And look at this, look at this. The Batanians did not push their advantage against the Sturgians. And as a result, we have now been able to push back quite a lot, actually. And we are now in a position where we can start picking off a bunch of their vassals. And as a result, weaken them even further than they were before, which is fantastic. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to just engage this guy straight up. Even though I don't have... Um, 
Chief of the Sturgeons. This is another defector. Are you serious? Oh, these guys grind my gears. Oh, they certainly do. I would not have expected this guy to be uh, doing this, but oh well. Never mind. All right. So where are they going to come from? Well, they're going to come over there. So I guess we'll just do the same thing that we usually do, Pinky. And uh, we are going to hopefully... Uh, should I try and get the archers on a decent elevation? Maybe I should do that. Where are the enemy? Okay, they're over here. The cavalry is actually coming relatively quickly. So I should probably get ready for them. There we go. <laughs> Uh, such a nice, such a nice hit, wasn't it? Uh, that was great. Okay, yeah, so unfortunately we are going to lose some people here because it seems like this guy is quite accurate with his thrown weapons. Not anymore. Not anymore. Thank you very much. Okay, so the enemy are over there. Okay, so that's good to know. We actually have a bit of an elevation here, I think. Very slight elevation, as you can see by the flags. You can see exactly what they're going to be, you know, uh, what the, uh, I, I guess, environment is like. So, you know, that's okay. Uh, maybe we can put the archers up here. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Why not? Let's put them over here. And then uh, have our... Infantry, they're, they're throwing their throwing weapons. I personally don't think that's a good idea, but I could tell them to hold fire if I wanted to, but I I kind of don't want to, really. Hmm, you know what? Maybe I should put my archers over here. This might be pretty good, because as you can see, our infantry might actually be going in relatively soon. I'm going to actually tell them to go in right now. Let's also delegate with our horse archers as well. And with our archers in the side area, that's going to mean a lot of damage being dealt to our opponent. And you can see here, they're just literally taking huge amounts of morale damage. They're scattering in panic. They can't do anything. And this is exactly how we have felt this entire campaign. Always on the back foot, always running away, always retreating. And now it is our turn to rise up and actually start doing some damage. So I'm very, very pleased to be able to do this. Unfortunately, I'm cutting down peasants. I really don't want to be cutting down peasants either, personally. I would much prefer to be killing very high tier units and uh, showing how strong Barney has become. But unfortunately, uh, yeah, peasants are my only target at this point, which is a little bit unfortunate. But what can you do? Anyway, we lost eight. We lost eight units, which is to be expected. But we gained some renown, which is actually quite nice because we're, we're getting there. And I'm going to let this guy go. You do yourself credit, sir. I shall not forget this. And he smirked at us at the end. Did you see that? He's like, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of that's kind of morbid, isn't it? Oh, uh, well, never mind. So we'll just take that. Is there anything else here that I really want to take? Well, the, should I take the food? I don't really need the food, so I won't take it this time, even though I'm kind of a bit paranoid about it because the thing is is that if I get caught in a siege defense or something like that then being in a situation to outlast your opponent is really very very good to do so I guess you know that's basically the reason why I wanted to do that but uh, yeah it seems like we're doing all right we're eliminating a bunch of vassals we're actually actually winning battles most of the time and Lasko is gaining a good amount of points in uh, medicine skill because, of course, we, we, you know, we have a bunch of people that are actually wounded at the moment. And as a result, I think that will actually be it for, for this episode. Wow. They don't like me at all in this castle, that's for sure. Anyway, that will be it. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.